Our next speaker is Dr. James Weissach. He's going to address patient regret, postfocal, find a place. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so I've been tasked to talk a little bit about regret after prostate cancer treatment. I think it's an interesting topic. It's a little shift in gears. These are my disclosures. So when we start talking about things like regret, it's, it's an interesting concept because it's, it's much more in, in the realm of uh, psychology. Uh, and this is an interesting quote from Seneca that you know, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. And it's important to know that he's a Stoic, right? And the philosophy of the Stoics is to sort of just endure. Interestingly, Steve Jobs has some comments on regret as well. And he's basically highlighting with this quote that oftentimes this comes in retrospect. And you're not able to really predict what you might regret in the future. And we all deal with regret, but what is it really? It's a feeling of sadness or repentance or disappointment over something that has happened or been done. And this is from the Oxford Dictionary. Specifically for what we're talking about today, though, is really decisional regret. And that comes from this uh, uh, definition in the publication, The Role of Regret in Medical Decision Making, which is really that there's a belief in an error that was made in a treatment decision. And this is really at the heart of what we're talking about. Localized prostate cancer is particularly prone to treatment decision regret. And that really comes from the fact that we have multiple options that we can give a patient when we're dealing with localized prostate cancer. Active surveillance, whole gland treatment such as prostatectomy, radiation, with or without hormone therapy. And of course now we've muddied the water in many ways by adding in this smorgasbord of focal therapy treatment options. So those number of options and the variety of choice is what creates challenges and uncertainty for a patient. That is the core of this discussion and that creates a lot of what uh, makes it difficult for patients as well as physicians, especially as we start to employ these, you know, because we're always going to question which would be the better way to go. This is from uh, the Journal of Psycholo Psychosocial Oncology, which I think is very pertinent here. And it look at what are some of the factors in a systematic review that are associated with regret after a cancer treatment. And one of their critical, one of their most important conclusions that is that informed decision making is really where this starts. And that is the critical tool in limiting decision regret. This is influenced by how we counsel patients, what we discuss with them, and in many ways, the number of treatment options really drives this. It, we're spoiled by choice in many ways, and that creates a scenario where patients may look back and say, well, what if I did X, Y, Z? And their conclusion from this review is that the discussion has to be as thorough as possible and has to improve the understanding of the side effects and treatments across that board. And as we increase our treatment options, this gets even more and more challenging. So specifically for prostate cancer localized disease, this is a very nice systematic review that was published last year on decision regrets across the board of treatments. And overall, the systematic review looked at 14 studies over 17,000 patients. And what they found is, is, and this echoes a lot of earlier studies, is about one out of five men will report decision regret over the treatment that they they chose, and one of the important conclusions here is that this exceeds similar studies in breast and thyroid. So it looks like prostate cancer is particularly high in the decision regret. And they broke it down by treatment choice. Active surveillance had the lowest decision regret, but it's still about one out of seven or eight men that has uh, decision regret with active surveillance. And you can imagine why, because you may progress you may have to undergo uh, prostate biopsies and MRI over time, and you're constantly anxious about that. Radiation was 19%, one out of 5.3 men. Prostatectomy, very similar. I wouldn't say it's significantly better. It's about 18%. Focal therapy, there were two studies in this uh, systematic review, and it looked like 16%. So you could say, oh, well, maybe there's a slight improvement there, but it's still not as good as active surveillance. I don't think we have the maturity in the data to really make conclusions on this, but it's an important concept to, to consider. Looking more at a prospective study, uh, 
Dr. Abreu uh, published this, looking at consecutive men undergoing HIFU and cryo for focal therapy and looking at a validated decision regret scale score with a median follow-up of 43 months. And I think this is important because regret might emerge differently at different time points. And that's something I, I constantly struggle with because oftentimes a patient, when they're dealing with an anxiety over a prostate cancer diagnosis, that's forefront in their thought process. What are we going to do about this cancer? When the cancer is controlled and you're doing well 5, 10, 15 years down the line, your PSA is undetectable or you have no evidence of cancer, that's when the regret over the impact on quality of life really takes forefront. And so it's important to understand what's the right time frame for checking decision regret. It's hard to know. Um, but what they showed in this is that there was, there was a treatment regret decision in this cohort of focal therapy about 19%. Again, keeps coming in at about one out of five, not, not far off. And you would think, okay, well, uh, it specifically they asked that my treatment choice did me a lot of harm. And it looks like in this, you know, uh, by and large, the uh, focal therapies did not look like they did. The, the HIFU was 91.5, so they said no. You know, so there were some pretty good results there, but again, overall, similar decision regret. We have looked at this in our own cryoablation cohort. Treatment-related regret was another uh, validated marker, at, and the median follow-up in our cohort was about 28 months, so a little bit sooner. I'm not sure how that influences what might you see, but it was about 14% here, closer to that active surveillance cohort, and it was highest for men reporting loss of potency or ejaculation. Again, it's about expectations, but not just expectations. It's also about informing about all the different choices. And this is going to be a very big challenge for us as we increase our choices. And we have to deal with the fact that one of the most important concepts in my estimation on decision regret for focal therapy is really treat, you know, giving them a good understanding of what the potential for retreatment looks like because you, we are gonna have a higher failure rate in there. The, the, we're, we're switching the balance over to improvement in quality of life, but we are not going to achieve the same cancer control by our, our current markers compared to the whole gland treatment. So men will have to, we will have to navigate that with men what, about what it means when we find a secondary tumor, or a new tumor, or a treatment failure. The other interesting thing is we, with focal therapy, can move the needle on erectile function improve preservation of erectile function, but now we have some novel quality of life challenges. And for example, ejaculatory dysfunction, semen volume. That has been presented to me by numerous patients as a disaster for their quality of life and their sexual experience. Here I thought we were gonna celebrate an imp improvement in uh, preservation of their erection, and now they're disappointed they don't have the same semen volume. So that's particularly challenged. And the specter of treatment failure is very important. And it's hard to guide men on this without the long-term data that we really need and how to actually assess for that. And that's something that we've been talking a lot about here at the meeting and we will keep working on, but this is particularly challenging. So decision regret is a critical challenge for localized prostate cancer. I think we all agree. I think it's critical to these dis discussions. We have to be very thorough with our informed decision and our discussions with patients, improve the patient's expectations and their impacts. This will improve the concepts of treatment regret. And a final quote, opposed to what the Stoics may have said, the Buddhists would say, live in the moment. You have to just accept some of the downsides. Cancer treatment is going to carry some impact. We have to be very frank about that. We aren't going to get out of uh, cancer treatment it without any impact. And that's unfortunately, you know, a hard thing to accept, especially once you've gotten a good cancer treatment and you're living with the consequences. But overall, uh, something we'll continue to work on. Thank you. Thank you, James.